Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Tuesday, September 13th, 2022. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's Monday night football game between the Broncos and the Seahawks. Then I will recap yesterday's baseball games. Look ahead to today's games. We have WNBA Finals Game 2 tonight, Major League Soccer, and NFL Power Rankings New Primaries, News and Notes, and Best Bet. We'll start with Monday Night Football. It was an interesting game, to say the least, as the Seahawks come out on top by a score of 17-16 in Russell Wilson's return game. Seattle's 1-0, Denver 0-1. Geno Smith was outstanding, 23 of 28, 195 yards and two touchdowns. Russell Wilson, 29 of 42, 340 yards and a touchdown. He was just not very good. In that game, despite putting up the big numbers, he just didn't get it done in the red zone. And the 12th man won them that game and their defense. There's, they're like the Seahawks of old, but we all know week one could produce wacky results. I think we've had three big wacky week one results, and we're going to look back and be like, how did that team win in week one? And you can guess which teams those are they're the Seahawks the Bears and the Giants and I think the Steelers could be in that group too depending on how they perform after the TJ Watt injury but the reason why I didn't include the Steelers in like that group is because Steelers were supposed to be much better than those teams this year at least by um my account and then the um the other three teams I thought were among the worst like seven teams in the league in the Seahawks the Giants and the Bears so we'll see how um, it all shakes out and whatnot. All right, now we'll move on to Major League Baseball. Um, we'll go over the results from yesterday and look ahead to the games being played today. Rangers over to Marlins, 32 double letter game one, so best bet was a loser. Texas is 61-79. Miami 57-83. and Guardians over the Angels 5-4. Guardians 74-65. LA 61-80. Astros over the Tigers 7-0. Astros 91-50. Detroit 54-87. Pirates over the Reds 6-3. The Pirates are 52-88. Cincinnati 56-83. Blue Jays over the Rays 3-2. The Blue Jays are 79-61. The Rays are 78-61. Cubs over the Mets 5-2. The Cubs are 59-82. The Mets are 89-53. Bad loss for the Mets. Marlins over the Rangers, 10-6, doubleheader game two. Marlins, 58-83. Texas, 61-80. Dodgers over the Diamondbacks, 6 nothing. Dodgers are 97-43. Diamondbacks are 66-74. And, and the Braves over the Giants, 3-2. Or vice versa, the Giants over the Rays, 3-2. The Giants are 68-73. Atlanta is 87-54. So the Mets catch a break with Atlanta losing, too. Right now we look ahead to today's games. We have two matinee games, actually, two doubleheaders. Um, the letter game one, 12-30, you have the Pirates and the Reds, Johan Oviedo and Luis Sessa. This is probably a makeup series from earlier in the year. Um, the Reds are minus 142. The Pirates are plus 120 over under 9.5. Over is minus 104. There's minus 118. Pirates plus 1.5 is minus 166. Reds minus 1.5 is plus 138. I'm going to go... I... Hmm, this is a hard one. So, I'm going to go with the Juice Thunder at minus 118. 1 o'clock, Rays Blue Jays. Jeffrey Springs and Alec Manoa. So, battling out for second in the AL East. And the winner of this series um, still has a, somewhat of a shot to top the Yankees. Um, Blue Jays are minus 156. The Rays are plus 132. Over under 7.5. Over is minus 118. Under is minus 104. Rays plus 1.5 is minus 162. Jays minus 1.5 is plus 134. And I'd say this is a bigger series for Toronto than it is for Tampa because the, the Blue Jays still have to play the Yankees, and the Yankees won the season series over the Rays. Um, I'm going with the under in this game. 6 o'clock, you have the Angels at the Guardians. Jose Suarez and Cody Morris. Guardians minus 134, Angels plus 114, over under 8, over is minus 106, under is minus 114. Angels plus 1.5 is minus 
192. Guardians minus one off is plus 158. This is another under. Next is 6-3 Astros Tigers. Hunter Brown and Drew Hutchinson. Astros minus 235. Tigers plus 194. Over under 8.5. Over is minus 104. Under is minus 118. Astros minus 1.5 is minus 138. Tigers plus 1.5 is plus 115. I'm going with the Tigers plus 115. They are pretty tasty as a straight up plus 194, but I'm not going to go there. Um, Next, Phil's Marlins. Bailey Falter and Sandy Alcantara. The Marlins are minus 132. The Phillies are plus 112. Over under 7. The over is minus 120. Under is minus 102. Phil's plus 1.5 is minus 210. Marlins minus 1.5 is plus 172. Under. Auto under for Sandy Alcantara. Double letter game two. Pirates Reds. Luis Ortiz and Reynal Espinal. Um, game lines aren't posted yet. Both these guys are making their debuts. 7 o'clock. You have the Orioles at the Nationals. Dean Kramer and Corey Abbott. Orioles minus 158. Nats plus 134. Over under 8.5. Over is minus 112. Under is minus 108. Orioles minus 1.5 is plus 102. Nats plus 1.5 is minus 122. Tough one, but I'm going to go with the over. Because I think Baltimore's offense will still go out there and, and try. Um, the better game two, Rays, Blue Jays. We don't know the pitching matchups yet. Cubs Mets from City Field, Adrian Sampson and Jacob DeGrom. Mets minus 420. I don't think I've seen a larger favorite this year. Cubs plus 330 over under 7. Overs plus 102. And there's minus 124. Cubs plus 1 half is plus 150. Mets minus 1 half is minus 182. I'm going to go with. First half total over three and a half because I think the Met offense will bounce back a little bit. Yankees Red Sox from Fenway. Garrett Cole and Nick Paveda. Cole and Fenway, not kind because of Rafael Devers his last time there. Um Yanks minus 166. Red Sox plus 140 over under eight and a half. Overs minus 106. Unders minus 114. Yankees minus one half is minus 102. Red Sox plus one half is minus 118. I'm going Red Sox for my plus one half at minus 118. I'm not suggesting that Boston's going to win the game outright. But I think it'll be a one-run game either way. Royals Twins at 7.30. Chris Bubick, Joe Ryan. Um, twins minus 188. Royals plus 158. Over under 8.5. Overs minus 106. Unders minus 114. Royals plus one half is minus 134. Twins minus one half is plus 112. Um... Over. Brewers Cardinals at 745. Matt Bush and Jordan Montgomery. Cards minus 190. Brewers plus 160. Over under 8. Minus 10 each way. Brewers plus 1 half is minus 30. Cards minus 1 half is plus 108. Um, under. Jordan Montgomery's been a beast since the trade. Um, 8 o'clock. A's Rangers. Ken Waldachuk and Cole Reagans. Rangers minus 144. A's plus 122. Over under 8.5. Over is minus 104. Under is minus 118. A's plus 1.5 is minus 170. Rangers minus 1.5 is plus 140. I like the over. Rockies, White Sox. Chad Cole and Michael Kopech. White Sox minus 205. Rockies plus 172. Over under 8.5. Over is minus 105. Under is minus 115. Rocks plus 1.5 is minus 125. White Sox minus 1.5 is plus 104. I like the under in this game a lot. 9.30, Dodgers, Diamondbacks, Clayton Kershaw, and Merrill Kelly. Dodgers minus 196, D-backs plus 164, over under 7.5, overs minus 118, unders minus 104. Dodgers minus 1.5 is minus 115, D-backs plus 1.5 is minus 104. I'm going with D-backs, run line plus 1.5 is minus 104. Padres, Mariners, U Darvish, and Logan Gilbert. Good pitching matchup. Padres minus 104, Mariners minus 112, over under 7, over is minus 115, under is minus 105. Padres minus 1 half is plus 150, Mariners plus 1 half is minus 182. So for the lines, maybe like 48-52. Um, a little above that. So the Padres, I'm, I'm sorry, the Mariners are a good bet at minus 112 then. 
Um, at 9.45, the Braves at the Giants. Kyle Wright, Jacob Junis. Braves minus 172, Giants plus 144, over under 7.5, over is minus 118, under is minus 104. Braves minus 1.5 is minus 122, Giants plus 1.5 is minus 118. Giants again, run line plus 1.5 and minus 118. These numbers are crazy. I'm not taking them straight up this time. I just like them um, on the run line plus 1.5 at minus 118. I took the uh, straight up yesterday and they won outright. All right, WNBA Finals Game 2 will be tonight between the Aces and the Sun. It should be a really fun and entertaining game. Um, 9 o'clock on ESPN. Um, in terms of a projected line... Um, I would say, hmm. I project Vegas as a seven-point favorite tonight. Or, I'm sorry, take it back, a ten-point favorite. They're home. Oh, my God. Um, they're favored by four and a half totals, 163 and a half. I'm laying it with Vegas. I love the Aces. They're so good. I know it was close last time, but I don't think it's going to be close this time. So, I'm going to lay the four and a half. With the Aces against the Connecticut Sun. We have a couple Major League Soccer games that we have to talk about. Um, there's five of them to be exact. Um, fun having soccer on a Tuesday. 7.30 you have CF Montreal and Chicago. Montreal winners three of their last five. Chicago won their last one, but wouldn't listen to the previous four before that. Um, I would assume Montreal's favored on the road. Or no, they're home. My bad. Um, I thought Chicago was home. Uh, Montreal's minus 200. Chicago plus 440. Draw plus 320. I'm going to go under two and a half goals plus 130. Eight o'clock. Miami hosts Columbus. Miami losers are the last three. Columbus, one win in their last five. Miami plus 125. Columbus plus 195. Draw plus 230. Um... Columbus needs the game. Miami is five back. They need it if they want to get back in it. Um, so I'm going to go with the draw here at plus 230. Minnesota hosts LAFC. This is an interesting game. Minnesota losers are the last three. LAFC won one in their last five. Um... LA is a even money favorite. Minnesota's plus two ten, draw plus two eighty. Um, I don't like LAFC's play to late. I kind of like the draw here, plus two eighty. And the LAFC is under some pressure here to win because if they lose, and say the Philadelphia Union win their next game, Philly's literally going to put away the one the home field advantage through the the postseason on them. Um, 8.30, Houston and New England. Um, both teams, one win in their last five. Um, Houston's a plus 155 home favorite. New England's plus 140, draw plus 240. Um, Houston's sort of out of it. They're 10 back of even eighth, 13 back of the playoff spot. I'm taking the Revolution on the road at plus 140. And then the other 8.30 game, KC hosting D.C. United. Both um, teams drew, drew in their last two games. Um, D.C. United's out of it. KC's out of it, too. Um, I would assume KC's favored because they're home. Um... Yeah, they're a big favorite. They're minus 160 DC, plus 340, draw 3 to 1. I kind of like the draw at 3 to 1 just for uh, for value because both these teams are out of it. All right, now I'll move on to the NFL power rankings as we head into week two. Um, it's a yearly tradition on the podcast, week one overreactions. And we look back 
at the end of the year, what turns out to be true, what turns out not to be true. Number 32, the New York Jets. Joe Flacco is a significant downgrade from Zach Wilson. There are some people that think that there was no drop-off, which is insane. Number 31, the Houston Texans will be competitive all season. 30, the Chicago Bears, team better than expected. 29, the Atlanta Falcons, same old Falcons. How they blew that game. Doesn't matter who the coach or the quarterback is and who's on defense, same old Falcons. 28, the New York Giants. Saquon Barkley is the favorite for the comeback player of the year. 27, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence isn't going to make the big leap. 26, Washington Commanders. Carson Wentz will actually stay healthy and produce. 25, the Seattle Seahawks. Geno Smith starts all 17 games. 24, the New England Patriots. The preseason proved to be the real Patriots. 23, the Arizona Cardinals. Cliff Kingsbury will be the first head coach fired. 22, the Carolina Panthers. New team, same Baker. 21, the Detroit Lions. The hard knocks jinx continues. 20, the Tennessee Titans. They're the second worst team in the division. 19, the Dallas Cowboys. The team season is lost without Dak Prescott. 18, the Cleveland Browns. No Watson, no problem. 17, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mitchell Trubisky starts all 17 games. 16, the Denver Broncos. Russell Wilson hasn't changed over the last um, couple of years as he it's what he is. Like this, the same guy we saw in Seattle two years ago is the same Russ from right now. Number 15, the Miami Dolphins. The defense has massively improved. 14, the San Francisco 49ers. Trey Lance ain't it. 13, the Indianapolis Colts. Same old song and dance post-Andrew Luck era. Doesn't matter who the quarterback is. Seems like they're just not going to just destroy bad teams and uh, take that next step. Number 12, the Baltimore Ravens. Vegas was right about the team being division favorites preseason. Number 11, the Philadelphia Eagles. Jalen Hurts is actually the guy. 10, the Las Vegas Raiders. Derek Carr is not worth the contract he got. Number 9, the New Orleans Saints. The comeback proves that the Saints would have been a playoff team instead of the Eagles a year ago. 8, the Green Bay Packers. Everybody was right about losing Devontae Adams. Yeah, no shit. Number seven, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady is finally hitting father time. Number six, the Minnesota Vikings. Justin Jefferson is easily the NFL's best wide receiver. Five, the Cincinnati Bengals. The offensive line is not improved. Four, the Los Angeles Rams. The Super Bowl hangover is for real. Three, the Kansas City Chiefs. No Tyreek Hill, no problem. Two, The Los Angeles Chargers actually have a home field advantage. Because everyone and their mother was saying, Oh, it's a home game for Vegas. Guess what? The Chargers won and they covered. Don't want to hear crap about that. And number one, the Buffalo Bills. They can go 17-0. So there you have it. Um, The power rankings as we head into week two of the NFL season. Okay, now I'll move on to primaries. We have a couple to discuss today in the states of New Hampshire and Rhode Island. New Hampshire, we have U.S. Senate and 1st and 2nd Congressional Districts. And for Rhode Island, we have Governor and 2nd Congressional Districts. We'll start with New Hampshire, and we'll start with the U.S. Senate for them. So U.S. Senate and New Hampshire, um, the Democratic primary um the incumbent is maggie hassan she is running again and she has two competitors paul Cropman and john 
Rigieri. Um, Hassan has a lot of endorsements, um, including one from Kamala Harris. So I think that she's safe in terms of primaries. And then the Republican side, you have a big group, um, Gerard Boulogne, John Berman, Don Bulduck, Bruce Fenton, Dennis Lamar, Edmund LaPlante, Vagram Marshamani, Chuck Morse, Kevin Smith, and Tejasina Savlingam. I think this is a three-horse race between Bulduck, Morse, and Smith. Um, I think Chuck Morse is going to win. I really do. He has um, endorsements from the governor of New Hampshire, Chris Sanumu, among other notable um, people, such as state legislators and local officials. So I'm going to say Chuck Morse is the easy winner for the Republican primary for the U.S. Senate election in New Hampshire. Now we'll move on to District 1. So District 1, Chris Pappas is your um, incumbent, and he's the only declared candidate and has a lot of endorsements from several organizations, so he should be good. Now the question is, who wins the red side? You have Tim Baxter, Gail Huff Brown, Tom Alkier, Mark Klebane, Caroline Leviat, Matt Mowers, Russell Prescott, Jaleed Town, and Julian Akiard. There are a bunch of endorsements for several of the candidates. Um, but I think that Tim Baxter and being a state rep will win this Republican primary and go up against Chris Pappas for District 1. And District 2, um, you have the lone Democrat declared Annie Custer, who is the incumbent, so I think she's safe. And then Republicans, we have a couple of them. We have Scott Black, Robert Burns, Michael Callis, George Hansel, Jay Mercer, Dean Poirier, and Lily Tang Williams. Um, So this is an interesting one. Um, I think it's between Robert Burns and um, George Hansel. Um, Hansel has an endorsement from Governor Sununu, which um, Sununu, my bad. So that is um, something very interesting. I think it's a two-horse race. And with um, Hansel um, being a mayor, I think um, he will uh, win this primary over uh, Robert Burns here. And I quickly want to touch on a gubernatorial for New Hampshire as well. So you have Tom Sherman as the Democratic nominee and declared Republican nominees, including uh, Sununu. Um, you have Julian Ockiard, Jay Lewis, Richard McMahon, Thad Riley, and Karen Testerman. I think Sununu has it. I would be surprised if he lost his primary and this race is one of six Republican-held governorships up for election this year in a state carried by Joe Biden in the 2020 presidential election. We talked about how Massachusetts was won um, last week's show. All right, now we'll do Rhode Island. We'll start with their um, gubernatorial election primary. Um, their incumbent governor is Dan McKee who is a declared Democratic candidate, um, has some competition. Matt Brown, Helena Fulquez, 
Nelly Gorbea, and Luis Daniel Munoz. Um, I think McKee's going to win. He's um, well-known in that state, so he should win the Democratic primary here. And then on the other side, um, you have two declared candidates, Ashley Calouse and Jonathan Ricciatelli. Um, who was a candidate for lieutenant governor in 2018. Um, I think that Calouse will win. She has an endorsement from the Rhode Island Republican Party. So, I think that Calouse will win, but I do think this will be a close primary here in Rhode Island. And second congressional district for Rhode Island is one that we are monitoring as well. Your incumbent is James Langevin, who's a Democrat. He, it looks like that, um, is not reseeking elections. So this is wide open here on the Democratic side for the second congressional district in Rhode Island. So you have Omar Ba, Spencer Dickinson, Joy Fox, Donald Keith, Seth Magaziner, Sarah Morgenthau, David Siegel, Cameron Moquin, Michael Neary, Ed Pacheco, Nicole Alexander Scott, Gabe Amo, Sam Bell, Dylan Conley, Brendan Doherty, George Alorza, Helena Fulquez, Nelly Gorbea, Jim Langevin, Nicholas Mattiello, Sabrina Matos, Carol McGenty, Joshua Miller, Michael Neary, James Sheehan, Joe Shikarki, and Teresa Tanzi. So this is a monster group of people. This is, I think, a very wide open competition with a lot of people with good resumes. But my pick for this is going to be Seth Magaziner. He used, he was a candidate for the governor this year, but he removed himself. And he is the Rhode Island general treasurer. So I'm going to go with Seth Magaziner to win this Democratic Party. And then on the Republican side, much smaller group, four candidates, Alan Fung, Donald Frederick Rabio, Jessica De La Cruz, and Robert Lancia. Um, the funny thing is that De La Cruz endorsed Fung, so that's a little bit of a uh, funny subplot here. Um, I'm going to say Fung does win because um, he's known in the state, he used to be a mayor, and um, was nominated for governor in 2014 and 2018. Has multiple organization endorsements. So I think that um, Fung will win this primary. Okay, now I'll move on to the news and notes for today. Um, there is some important ones to get to. Um, Dak Prescott. Um, will not go on the injury reserve, according to Jerry Jones. As Jerry says that he believes Dak can play within the next four games. So, okay, so that's interesting. Is Dak's back in a month and say the Cowboys, the Cowboys should really need the Eagles to struggle. They better root for Minnesota on Monday night next week and Root for the Panthers to beat the Giants. I mean, I don't think you need to really worry about the Giants in Washington. To me, it's more of the Eagles you have to worry about, even though the Giants in Washington both won their games in Week 1. Oh, we forgot to include Washington in the WTF Week 1 group. I, I apologize about that, guys. They kind of belong in that group with the Giants and the Bears and the Seahawks. If I didn't include them because they were... I, I probably didn't include them because they were favored in that game against Jacksonville. But, um... We'll see if Jerry is right about this or not. Um, and good news for the Steelers, TJ Watts' injury not season ending as he isn't expected to require surgery at the end of, or end of season. 
and he can return in six weeks. So that is excellent news for the Steelers. So maybe he'll be back by Halloween. Um, Jamal Adams injured his um, his quad uh, his quad tendon versus the Broncos. Um, so that is just a brutal knee injury for Jamal Adams that he injured his quad tendon. And then Ian Rappaport reported that uh, Dak could be back week 8 or week 9. So we'll see who's right between Jerry and uh, um, Ian Rappaport. Um, Mac Jones has a chance to play this week against the Steelers after x-rays came back negative. So that's good news for the Patriots. Najee Harris should be good. After scans come back negative. So that's good news for Pittsburgh. Elijah Mitchell out two months with a sprained MCL and they'll miss extended time. That is brutal news for the San Francisco 49ers. Um, Chris Godwin likely out a few weeks um, as they have optimism that Godwin doesn't have a major hamstring injury, but he will miss time. Um, there's reports that... Um, The 49ers would listen to offers on Jimmy Garoppolo after Dak Prescott's injury as the Cowboys open up as a possibility. As Mike McCarthy says, we definitely anticipate making some roster moves. So the big story last night in the game is um, Nathaniel Hackett, the new coach of the Broncos, decision to kick the field goal from 57 yards or was it 60-something yards, 60, 62, something like that, instead of putting the ball in Russell Wilson's hand. Russell Wilson actually defended the field goal. He said it was not the wrong decision. They must really believe in McManus. I wouldn't have gone there. I don't love McManus as much as I love Justin Tucker, or, Brand, or, then, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Daniel Carlson, or... Chris Boswell, even from Pittsburgh, but um, yeah, it was a sixty-four yarder. So, I'm surprised Russell Wilson defended that decision. They, like I said, they just must love McManus. And the Seattle fans are chanting Gito's name after the game, which was cool. A lot of Russell Wilson's former teammates were first in line with roasts as Broncos country gets. Fired on Twitter. So, um, obviously Twitter was uh, ripping Russ and the Broncos. Um, So, some baseball news. Um, After it was announced that there was a scenario where the Padres could win the NLS, the magic number for the Dodgers remained at one after... The Dodgers had thought the clinch on Sunday. They clinched last night, for real. So the first team to clinch a division in a playoff spot, the Los Angeles Dodgers. There's a bunch of F-bombs going off from Terry Francona in last night's game. So if you have not seen it, I suggest you do. Um... Gabe Kapler and pitcher Zach Little have some words after Little was pulled, and then they took it to the clubhouse. Some hockey news. Um, the Canadians named Nick Suzuki their captain as he becomes the 31st captain in Montreal Story franchise history. That's really cool for Nick Suzuki. And the Avalanche side... Former Penguins forward Evan Rodriguez to a one-year, $2 million contract. So good little depth piece for the Avs as they try to repeat as Stanley Cup champs. U.S. women's national team to play Spain on October 7th as the European Tour will conclude after facing England on October 7th. So... That's pretty cool. And one last thing. If I did not mention this yesterday, which I don't think I did, um, I just have to bring this up because I don't think I brought it up yesterday. Uh, the Ringers, Jonathan Charks, 
had passed away over the weekend after his long battle of cancer. Um, it's just a really, really sad story. Um, Charts leaves behind his wife and his three-year-old son. Thoughts and prayers go out to his family, his friends, and the ringer staff, Bill Simmons, and everybody. Just very sad um, that the ringer lost one of its very best writers. So I just wanted to uh, mention that on the podcast. Thoughts and th- thoughts and prayers go out to the Charks family, the Ringer, and all of his family and friends. Okay, last but not least, best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, there's some interesting ones that I might go with. I thought about going to Vegas in WNBA Finals Game 2, but... I am not going to go there. I'm going to lay a quarter unit on a baseball total. I actually really like, and that's the under in the White Sox-Rockies game. Um, I just think that Michael Kopech will dominate the Rockies lineup. Um, so give me under eight and a half between the Rockies and the White Sox for my best bet of the day. So that's it for today's show. I'll be back tomorrow recapping the baseball, the soccer, the WNBA, um, the primaries. And then we have news and notes and best bet for you as well. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.